Hi everyone, it's Andrew Fazekas, the Night Sky Guy, here as your host for the Night Sky this week. As always, welcome wherever you're watching from. I'd love to hear, put it in the comment section. I'd love to see where you're watching from, where you're joining me. I hope you had some clear skies this past weekend. It was absolutely magnificent here where I am in my neck of the woods. It was great. I was in Montreal. I was also just north of New York City at a conference in a, the world's largest astronomy expo, space expo, fantastic, called NEF. Uh, it's been going around for more than three decades, uh, and it's the place where if you love astronomy, that's a place to go. Uh, lots of manufacturers and friends. I met some old friends, new friends, uh, just fantastic, and some really exciting potential news too down the pipes that I will share with all of you guys when the time is right but there's lots of interesting things. And the skies were really great. Uh, got to see uh, planets, got to see uh, some constellations, really nice with the weather warming up. It makes such a difference to be outside. And it's, you know, from in my neck of the woods here in uh, the Montreal area, usually uh, later spring, like in May and early June, we get a lot of black flies and mosquitoes and it's not so much fun to be outside. Uh, now it's perfect, there are no bugs, uh, and the skies are really beautifully clear. So lovely time for myself to be outside with a telescope uh, and cruising the night sky. Now, let's turn to uh, the planetarium uh, uh, program in first, though the big news, of course, uh, celestially that you'll hear a lot about this week, it's gonna be a solar eclipse. Now, before you guys get all excited about <laughs> getting out your eclipse glasses and watching it, unless you're in a very sweet spot in the South Pacific, uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere, you're not going to see this live. I'm gonna show you uh, some great content that I'm gonna share with you uh, from my friends at, at um, uh, timeanddate.com. Let me just move over here and I'll show you this is their website timeanddate.com this is my go-to uh anything related to time conversion but also mapping out some really nice uh uh eclipse information so we're going to have what's called a hybrid uh eclipse coming up on april 20th this week and the path of this eclipse where you'll see totality meaning where the skies will get dark and the, the sun will be totally covered is uh, along this pathway that you can see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There's the Australian continent, Papua New Guinea. There's Indonesia. And you can see that dark line here that 
that I'm showing you here. That is, if you're along inside this pathway, that is where you'll see a total eclipse. You can see that right here. That line right there is really where you'll get to see the absolute total 100% darkness. And you can see it goes through some very, um, uh, very remote regions and, and actually does uh, go through just the tip of eastern uh, Australia, right there. You can see just there, if we just zoom in just along this little outcrop right here, this peninsula, that section. So there are going to be astronomers who are set up uh, in that area. And in fact, time and date is going to have uh, their crew uh, live streaming it. So if you are interested in looking at it, virtually is the way to go. There is a link here to where the live eclipse will be on YouTube. Let me give you a link to this right now so you guys can go and check out all the information. I'm going to put it into the chat. Uh, there it is. That's from time and date. And the live eclipse will be streamed by them um, here. And this is the page for that on YouTube. And I'm going to share that link as well, so you won't miss it again. April 20th, the hybrid total eclipse means that there'll be a ring of fire, kind of a, an annular eclipse, where the edge of the sun will be uh, visible as a ring. Uh, and also some parts of the world along that pathway will see a total eclipse, where the moon will completely cover the sun. And so that is a really great website, timeanddate.com. You'll have all the information about uh, the eclipse, where it is, how it's going to look from different points uh, of view on our globe. So do check that out. So let's go into the planetarium software. I've got it set up here. And I'm just going to go live now and into Monday as sun sets. What does it look like? This is the view here uh, of what you'll see. And if you look, you'll see towards the west uh, a beautiful Venus uh, that is shining in the constellation of Taurus the Bull. Beautiful sight. You can't miss, uh, you know, Venus because it's just so brilliant, right? I mean, Venus is the brightest planet uh, right now. It's the nearest one to Earth, of course, and it's enshrouded eternally by clouds, sulfur dioxide clouds. It's a runaway greenhouse effect that's happening on Venus. It's really neat to be able to see it. This circle that you're seeing here is about, it simulates what you would see in a field of view of binoculars. I've placed that there because I think it's pretty handy. Most of us have binoculars and you want to know like how much real estate in the sky could you see um, with binoculars? And I find this a little handy, a handy kind of uh, um, drawing there, that circular view. That's the field of view in binoculars. So there's Venus. And of course, if we zoom in really super close, this is the view through a uh, telescope that you would see. You And look, what's so cool, <laughs> I love this, is that Venus is actually a disk. It looks like a, a miniature version of a gibbous moon. So a little bit more than uh, half of that disk is visible. But in this case, it's not our moon, of course. It's Venus. You need a telescope with a high magnification eyepiece to be able to see this as disk. And if you do have that kind of equipment, highly recommend you watch uh, Venus up close to see this. It really brings it into reality. I think a different perspective for all of us that it's not just a, a star that it looks like to the naked eye, right? To the naked eye, it just looks like a brilliant star hanging there in the western sky after sunset. But re in reality, it is a world. And if you have a telescope, this is what it looks like. And all of that is clouds, right? So what you're seeing here is actually the clouds reflecting the sunlight. And what's neat is, of course, if we kind of see what the, the stats are in terms of um, distance, right? Let me just move out of here too close. V uh, Venus is currently, get this, 8.95 light minutes away. So it means it's practically nine light minutes away, which means that it is 161 million kilometers away, and it takes light that's reflecting off the cloud tops of Venus. It takes it 
more than of almost nine minutes to reach your eye. That's the one-way trip of the speed of, remember the speed of light is at 300,000 kilometers per second. For those of you in the US, my friends, that's 180,000 um, miles, miles per second. That is the speed of light, those photons of light traveling through interplanetary space. It takes nine minutes. You're looking back in time, nine minutes fascinating stuff and it's right there you just step outside you don't need to be in a dark site on the countryside even within the city limits with lots of light pollution venus is easy to see what you just need to have is a clear view towards the western sky that's really what you uh what you need uh to really see it and so uh just lovely just lovely i can see uh uh, we've got folks from Vienna, uh, Austria tuning in. We've got folks from, wow, Ni Nairobi, Kenya as well. That's great. So wonderful see to see for from La uh, Sil Sylvan Lake, Alberta joining us. Wonderful. Where else are you guys joining? Please share it in the comments. I love to see where all my stargazing friends are around the world. Um, so there you have it. You've got... Uh, the beautiful uh, view of Venus. Now I'm using the software Sky Safari. It's a great software. Uh, I can change my location of where I am uh, very easily. I'm right now in um, in the United States. Uh, this is set for near Washington D.C., uh, which is you know mid northern latitude. Most folks. Uh, in the northern hemisphere live along the mid northern northern latitude similar to like london rome tokyo um that 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 kind of perspective if you're in north america this kind of is the same sky as you'd see if you're in montreal toronto vancouver um or if you're as far south as washington even if you're in miami or in los angeles you'll have similar type of views as what you're seeing here on my screen uh, it's a, a really a wonderful sky that you'll see as well. And this week, there's some interesting things that are also happening. So if we move towards uh, later this week, uh, like April 21st, look what pops up into our field of view. We've got our friend the moon, a very whisker-thin crescent moon that's popping up. And if we kind of move it towards the 22nd of uh, April. This is an absolutely beautiful site. Highly recommend you guys look at it. There you can see that is the beautiful star cluster Pleiades, the Pleiades, or also known as the Seven Sisters. Again, visible from typical suburban skies. As long as it's quite clear, you should be able to see this with binoculars. A cinch. This is the field of view again of binoculars, the green circle that you're seeing, a typical seven by 50 pair of binoculars, seven times the magnification. That's what this, the number seven on your binoculars means. And what's neat is there's the moon and there's Venus. So the moon is sandwiched between this beautiful beacon like Venus. It's like a diamond like star. And then on the other side of the moon is the Pleiades star cluster. It's an amazing three for one deal. Again, visible easily in the southwestern sky. This is again after sunset. I would say the sweet spot is probably 30 minutes, 45 minutes after sunset, where it gets dark enough to start beginning to tease out those details in, in the Pleiades star cluster. And binoculars will help tremendously to see those Pleiades. Remember, it's getting lost. This is a traditional fall, winter uh, object, celestial object. We call a deep sky object, meaning it's outside of our solar system. That's what the Pleiades are. And it's considered one of the closest star clusters to uh, the Earth. It's located about 444 light years away. And there you have it, folks. It's on display, probably some of the final views of the season uh, before we say goodbye to, to the Pleiades star cluster. And the moon on, this is again on Saturday, April 22nd, will be sandwiched between the, the those, those two objects, Venus and Pleiades. That's where the moon will be. Now, there's one more really very, very cool thing I, I, I'd like to say, actually, with the moon. Uh, if we go to 
uh, Sunday, April 23rd, the crescent moon now will be much thicker, right? You can see that in this, uh, in this uh, field of view right here. Again, looking towards the west after sunset. Look how beautiful of a pairing it'll be with Venus. Again, photographic opportunity here, folks. Get those smartphones out. Snap a photo of this. I'd love to see it. Share it on my channels, whether you're watching on YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Please share your photos of this. This is going to be a cinch to take a photo with your smartphone. No problem. Uh, again, sweet spot, I would say about a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour after sunset. Or you can go even beyond that, um, but that getting that glow from the sunset really makes this photograph so unforgettable. And just try it. Um, try multiple photographs. Put your smartphone on a, on a tripod, perhaps, if you can affix it to a, a tripod. It'll get you into longer exposure territory, uh, and you can get deeper photographs and be able to catch things like the Orion uh, the hunter constellation nearby you'll be able to pick that up and of course Sirius that bright star way off to the left of here of the the moon Venus pair so great stuff there that's again on Sunday after your local sunset check that out and know it's visible wherever you are around the world so do look for that now there's one more thing guys one more thing I got to talk about is the Lyrid meteor shower Guess what? This is a great shower now because the moon is going to be out of the way for the deepest part of the shadow. This is going to be peaking uh, Saturday night, April 22nd, uh, and late into the night, uh, and into Sunday, April 23rd. So what you're seeing here right now, you can see those things kind of those lines streaking out from the center. That center is what we're calling the radiant of the, of the Lyrid meteor shower. And those are the individual shooting stars. We also know that meteors, as we call them shooting stars romantically, they're not stars, of course, they're sand grain sized little space rocks that are burning up in the upper atmosphere of the earth. You can kind of think of it like this view that I have here on the screen of uh, the, the meteor shower is uh, those, uh, like if you were going into a snowstorm with a car, if you've ever been driving in a snowstorm and you put your headlights on at night, you see those individual snowflakes hitting your windshield and it looks like they're coming from one small area in front of the car. That's basically what's happening. The earth is plowing through a field of space rocks and they're hitting the Earth's windshield, which is our atmosphere that protects us. And they burn up in that atmosphere and they appear to come from one part of the sky that's occupied by the constellation, guess what? Lyra, the harp, right? The ancient Greek mythological um, uh, musical instrument, the lyre. So Lyra is uh, easy to find because there's a super bright star that's pointing the way. This is visible uh, soon after uh, you know, the sun sets and, and, and the sky starts to darken. It'll rise in the northeast, eastern part. And by midnight, this is the view. On Saturday night into Sunday morning, this is the view that you'll have. And you'll see that bright star. It's the only super bright star, the brightest star in the eastern part of the sky around midnight. And the radiant of the Lyric shower, guess what? It's right there, right next to it. And again, this is the constellation Lyra the Harp. That's why this uh, meteor shower is named the Lyrids because it seems to radiate out from the constellation Lyra. Now, I know what your next question will be is how many shooting stars will we see? Expectations are about usually every year annually with the Lyrids, it's about 15 to 30 shooting stars, so about 20 on average. And it will, the, how much you see, I don't, you know, are you going to see 20 shooting stars per hour uh, or less is how much light pollution you have locally, how clear your skies are. So if you can get out to a dark location somewhere far away from light pollution, you will see a lot more of the, this shower. And stay tuned for fireballs too. These are baseball, basketball sized stones that produce what we call bolides or bright fireballs. And they are visually very appealing. They're eye catching. And any meteor showers associated with fireballs just because you just have that cloud of stuff that Earth is slamming into.
So there you go in this uh, animation, you can see where that is. It's in the Northeast. And uh, really that is going to be a beautiful view. You can see right here of the entire sky and it's we're all focused on the eastern part of the sky late night saturday into the early morning of sunday and why early morning sunday why would you want to stay stay up for it it's because you see that see the star vega and the lyrids see how they're climbing up i'm already at 2 30 in uh in the morning 3 30 in the morning you see how high it is so the later that you stay up into the night into sunday into the sunday morning hours you the the radiant of the shower the center of the shower is rising higher into the sky meaning you'll see more shooting stars the show will get better so get prepared to find a spot where you have a clear view of the overhead sky that is going to be critical a clear view of the overhead sky no trees or anything maybe a big field uh, if you have a nice park where you live in the city where there's big field no big lights around try to shield your eyes from lights and if you can get out of the city it's better definitely in, a, in the countryside you'll see more of those shooting stars and just be patient let your eyes adapt to darkness it takes about 20 to 30 minutes for your eyes to adapt to the darkness and forget about smartphones don't turn them on if possible because they will definitely uh wreak havoc with your eye vision they'll just ruin it and you'll need another 20 30 minutes once you turn that off to to get adapted to see all the shooting stars even the faint ones so preserve your vision that way if it's cool might be still cool where you are make sure you have blankets get that hot chocolate out go with friends it always makes it more fun you guys can stake out different parts of the sky if you're in a group of people and i would say get a maybe a reclining lawn chair or blankets to lie down on you don't want to get a crink in your neck staring up at the sky like this for an hour or two it's not fun guys you want to lie down or on a reclining lawn chair something like that where you get super comfortable and just lay back and watch the show the lyrids are a lot of fun it's associated with the comet thatcher that comes around swings around the sun every few years and it just deposits it's a shedding of material off the comet as it melts that forms these clouds of debris that earth is slamming into and produces this amazing sky show every year uh centered around april 22nd to april 23rd every year it's called the lyrid meteor shower you don't want to miss it lots of wishes to be made phew so that's a lot of stuff guys uh if you like this video hit that smash that uh subscribe button whether it's youtube or facebook or twitter or twitch uh your uh your uh smashing of that subscription button would make a huge difference because that's what allows me to bring these videos into your home and stay tuned for sky charts i'll be posting all week long so by subscribing to my channel you won't miss any of my sky charts for these things that i've talked about all these amazing sky events so you don't want to miss on that and if you're interested in exploring more about astronomy maybe you want to dive in a little bit well i've got my book backyard guide to the night sky it is uh published by national geographic i've smashed so much stuff sort of like compressed into this book over decades of my amateur astronomy experience i've been involved in amateur astronomy for over over well over three decades uh i've observed from my with just using my unaided eyes to large giant telescopes observatory sized telescopes i've taught countless of workshops and made countless presentations of all ages and all that years of uh, of learning that I've done, I've put into this book, The Backyard Guide to Night Sky. It's a pocket edition, so it's soft cover. You could take it on vacation, and it's available wherever books are sold. And I'm also selling copies of this book on my website, thenightskyguide.com. I'll put a link in the chat in a few minutes. And I'm selling signed, personally signed, dedicated copies of this book. I also have my new book that I co-authored uh, it's called Stargazer's Atlas the ultimate guide to the night sky this is a coffee table six and a half pound gigantic book that has all 88 constellations uh, worked out mythology cultural references uh, astro tourism astro archaeology uh, and and the the pure science behind all the objects we can see at night and tours of all kinds of 
uh, skies from different parts of the world. So wherever you're living, this is an amazing keepsake book that you can use on those cloudy nights to kind of uh, chart out your journeys that you want to do under the stars. It really gets you motivated. Again, I'm selling uh, copies of this National Geographic book on my website, thenightskyguy.com, personally signed, dedicated copies you can pick up there. So that's lots of stuff uh, visible. Uh, phew. <laughs> Anyways, stay tuned for all those sky charts. I'll be back next week on Monday. Without further ado, I want to wish all of you clear skies. Until the next video, bye-bye.